Welcome to Inside Sim Racing, episode 35. I'm your host, Jessica Lopez. We have a lot of news to cover from the past couple of weeks. Sean's gonna be reviewing some gaming headphones by Razer, and our very own Len O'Kell will be reviewing the racing sim, Turismo Cartera. We also have a Live for Speed report, and the Mod Squad, of course. And all of today's top stories are sponsored by Viva Media. Kick your brain into high gear as you travel the globe solving incredible mind-bending puzzles. Tinker with tons of gadgets and create the chain reactions you need to succeed. Unlock a 3D world that the entire family can enjoy. Crazy Machines 2, now available at Amazon.com for $14.99 for the PC, rated E for everyone. For all of our viewers who joined in our contest on episode 34, we now have a winner for STCC The Game and R Factor, but you have to stay tuned to the end of the show for us to reveal who those winners are. Now, a few episodes back, or a while back, we mentioned the VW Sirocco making an appearance um, on the Live for Speed game at the Lipzig Gaming Convention. At the time, Live for Speed had no official release date of the VW Sirocco, and we were hoping, or actually I was supposed to be announcing the release date on the show today. However, we just got word that it's been postponed until early 2009 due to the developers finding more bugs than expected on that patch. Once it is released, we will let you know here on Inside Sim Racing, and S1 and S2 licensed drivers will be able to download that VW Sirocco that you're watching footage of. Courtesy of Live for Speed, you can actually go to LFS.net if you'd like to watch the whole thing. It's right on their front page. On to Rockstar. Rockstar Games announced new downloadable content for Midnight Club Los Angeles for the PS3 and Xbox 360. This new downloadable content is the South Central Upgrade Map. The South Central Upgrade Map will be a third of the size of their original game map. Players will now be able to drive a new area of the city, which will include LA landmarks such as Exposition Park, USC Campus, and the Shrine Auditorium. The content is free to download, however there will be some additional content that you can download at a small purchase price. And for all you PC sim racers out there, if you're looking for a cool website to go to, you can go to racedepartment.com. They've just got a complete new facelift. They've taken which, which has already been a great website and made it even better. You can go there to get news, support for sims, and racing, of course. So visit racedepartment.com to check out their new layout. Now I'm going to hand it over to Sean, who's been eagerly awaiting for me to hurry up and finish the top stories so he can review the gaming headphones by Razer. Well, you've heard me talk about driver distraction being a big part or a big hindrance of sim racing many times on the show. And Darren and I have both been exploring using headphones for racing. I find that in headphones, I hear a lot more detail of the game, such as skidding noises, uh, locking up of the brakes, and at the same time, it blocks out the distraction of outside sounds. And because of that, I've been exploring a bunch of different options, and I contacted the company Razer about their headphones, and they sent me a couple of products. They sent me their Lachesis mouse, which comes extremely nice packaging. It's a 4,000 DPI laser mouse. It's extremely high precision, makes getting around that garage area way simpler or a lot more uh, easy to show where I want my mouse. Or if I'm using the camera angles, it's a lot more direct. But for sim racers, mice or mouses aren't really the most important thing for us. But I also got their Moray headphones and earbuds might be a more accurate description. They come in a little case and they're very small, like you'd expect with an iPod or a Walkman type device. So, I have my uh, volume here my, for my controller, and if I plug them in, it will disable those sounds. One thing, I have done a little testing already on these, but I'll tell you that now, the, there's no independent volume control for these headphones. So, it will be controlled by the master volume, which will also affect the volume signal going to my butt kicker. So once you get the volume adjusted right with your computer, you might find that you need to turn your butt kicker volume up a little bit to match. So let's go ahead and see how these sound out on the track. Well, all in all, I found the sound quality to be amazing. I, I heard every detailed background sound, the engine sounds were vibrant, 
The most important thing, I forgot that I was wearing headphones. They are so lightweight, they actually seal off your ears, so they're almost like noise canceling micro, uh, headphones. I didn't hear anything outside. I completely forgot. Again, they're very light. Uh, the cord was not in my way. Worked out very nice compared to like regular headphones, which I definitely remember that I'm wearing them. They're big and they're a little bit of an obstruction. However, regular headphones usually come with a microphone. So when we're talking about gaming headphones, you wouldn't be able to communicate. You would need to have a secondary microphone device. So that's something to take into consideration depending on your usage. For me, I think I'd go ahead and get that other mic. They're so comfortable, I would prefer wearing those. And uh, quite honestly, I'm gonna have to try these out more and I'll have to try out other versions of earbuds to see. Uh, they had very good bass sound as well. So that's surprising from something so small. Anyway, quite impressed with Razer, the Razer Moray earbuds. So check them out yourself. Thanks for the review on those headphones, Sean. They're actually pretty cool and I might need to steal those from my iPod. So if you find them missing, don't come a knocking over here. All right, guys, we told you we have a Live for Speed report coming up by our Live for Speed reporter, Michael. But before we get to that, I want to show you this video of Race Pro, which is supposed to be the first true sim on the Xbox 360. We got a lot of comments on our YouTube page with people asking or commenting on how can it be a first true sim without a good wheel to race with. And that's about to change. Fnatic is working hard on a new wheel, a Porsche wheel, that we're going to be getting here. So when we do get it, we will let you know all about it. In the meantime, enjoy this footage of Race Pro and then Michael Passinghan's report on Live for Speed. joining us here at Laguna Seca where the cars are getting ready to roll away in just under an hour's time. Well, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca is a 3.6 kilometer switchback mix of fast straights and technical corners among the most demanding in motorsports. And many of the features of the track pay tribute to some of the American racing greats. Take a look at turn two, the Andretti hairpins. Very tricky, curving high speed downhill approach into a technical double apex left-hander. So easy to get it wrong. Then there's the straight between turns six and seven, and that carries the name of multiple champ car title winner Bobby Rahal. But the signature corner here at Laguna is the famous corkscrew. It's considered to be one of motorsport's most spectacular and challenging corners with a 91 meter drop in elevation and a blind crest and apex on the uphill approach. The corkscrew is always a big draw with the crowds, and maybe today's race will see history made there once again. Race Pro. Nothing gets closer. Hi, it's Mike Passingham again for another LFS report for Inside Sim Racing. As you all have no doubt have heard from the Inside Sim Racing guys, unfortunately there's been a bit of a problem with the latest Lift for Speed patch. It was due to come this week, probably on the day you're watching this show, however it has been delayed. In the hope that the patch would be coming, I cleared everything I'd done. I had a whole report going for you with uh, a sound mod and some Road Sport Winter Cup news, but that all got cleared. I'll put it on next year. So instead, I'll take you through a little story of how my weekend went when I discovered the new patch was on its way. That was a good hold it. I wonder what's going on in Live for Speed at the moment. Probably not much, I guess. Let's have a look. Holy... Hello and welcome to this small presentation of the Volkswagen Sirocco recreated inside Live for Speed, a PC racing simulator.
being supplied with a highly detailed 3D object of the car, Eric Bailey was able to create a still highly detailed but now usable car model for real-time gameplay. A lot of attention to detail has gone into it, making sure the car's identity comes across as realistic as possible. This level of detail is visible as well as on the outside as on the inside. When recreating a car inside Level Speed, we attempt to get its handling as close to reality as possible. With some information kindly provided by Volkswagen, we were able to achieve this. The car's handling is very comparable to the original. The rest of this presentation will show you a bit more of the car in action. It's always a momentous occasion when a new package comes to Live for Speed. We had one earlier in the summer with some new cockpits and some general updates, and we had some last Christmas with a brand new Formula BMW. This year, a Merry Christmas from the developers, we get a brand new car once again. This time the VW Scirocco, officially licensed by Volkswagen. I wonder how the VW Scirocco is going. I bet it's been released by now. Oh, excitement. Right, let's have a look. Hello, racers. We're sorry to have to announce that the VW Scirocco will not be released this week as planned. Unfortunately, we are unable to continue working into the following week, and it has turned out impossible to reach the, the required standard in the time available. Okay, so it's been postponed. Not the end of the world. In fact, it's a good thing. The developers wanted to make sure that they provided the users with a working, realistic product instead of something that was hashed together and needed further patches in the future. The problem was that the stability control and traction control were not up to scratch with the Volkswagen. In addition to that, there are a number of graphical glitches going on with the new and improved shadow system in Lift for Speed. A lot of different graphics cards were providing very strange results when used. In terms of other improvements for the new patch, there will be new wheels for the Formula BMW, rotating brake discs on some cars, and also ABS on a lot of the road cars. This is proving currently a controversial issue, however, it is being resolved on the forum. Uh, lots of discussions going on about how it's going to be used. It is actually very useful indeed, I've tried it out. Very nice, improves your lap times by quite a bit, although it may take some of the fun out of driving. In addition, there's been some other discussions on the Lift for Speed forum about limiting setups. Now, we know that the Volkswagen Scirocco is going to have limited setups, such as tyre pressure and tow being some of the only things you can change. People are starting to think maybe they should be on more cars. This is a discussion that is raging on the forum, but it's very good and very interesting, so I suggest you go over to the Lift for Speed forum at lfsforum.net and check out what's going on over there. Okay, well that's it from me this year. I wish you all very happy holidays, and I'll see you in January for another LFS ISR report. See you then. When it comes to racing, most of you out there know the big names like Formula One and NASCAR, but all over the world there's these small racing series with huge fan bases and huge followings, which leads us to our next topic, Turismo Cartera. It's a racing sim made by Tupes, and is out of Argentina. I'm gonna hand it over to our very own Len O'Kell, which will dissect this game and tell you all about it. G'day guys. Today I'd like to show you a sim that's not very well known throughout the world. It's called Turismo Carretera. Turismo Carretera is an Argentinian based real series. It's been around for 70 years and uses GT style cars. It's not very well known around the world, these guys are very well known at home and have a fantastic and large support base. The online version of Turismo Carretera is made by Tupes and they've done a wonderful job of replicating the real cars and liveries. We're going to score Turismo Carretera over 10 points, ranging from physics to force feedback. The first point being physics. 
found the physics to be very good. The two pairs of guys have done a wonderful job on them. And using the G-Motor physics they combine to give a great experience. The engines in these cars are six cylinder and the power feels very good. I scored the physics at 8.5. Getting on to graphics now. The in-car experience is very good. I have an MSI 260 GT and the graphics turned all the way up and was getting 120 frames per second at most tracks in traffic. So it's very easy on your system. The cockpits and in-car look fantastic. You've got roll bars, the tacos in the right spot and everything seems very very nice. The tracks are modelled on the GPS system and remind me a lot of the NASCAR 2003 road tracks. I scored the graphics at 7.5. Sounds. When driving in these cars with the sound turned up, you realise they do help with the driving experience feedback. They do get to you after a while though. The cars sound like tuned down F1 cars. I scored the sound at 7. Presentation. Trismo Carretera is based on the ISI R Factor base. Although it's standalone, it's very nicely set out and things are easy to find. If you've used R Factor Sims before, you will find it very easy to navigate around the game and it's very easy on your eyes. I scored the presentation at 8. Moving on to Fun Factor. I really enjoyed these cars. The overall feel is very nice. I went online and had a, a couple of intense battles on a few different servers. It was definitely a lot of fun. For fun factor, I scored Turismo Carretera at 8. Moving on to damage. I always run my damage at 100%. So I was interested to see how this compared to other, other sims and mods. It's really up there with a lot of mods. Wheels come off, engines blow, and the aero damage works accordingly. I had the wheel off centre after a collision. Not too bad. Damage I gave a 7.8. Turismo Carretera comes with 12 tracks, which are built with the GPS system. Track mapping is great, but I found, a look, found the look of the tracks a little plain. And having said that, once you're in a serious battle on track, who notices these things anyway? I scored the tracks at 7. Multiplayer. Multiplayer is what you expect from an R, R Factor based ISI sim. I found there are a lot of servers on the to race with. Some open and there are a lot of league servers. Pings are good. I joined a few servers to check things out and I was pinging 170 to 180 depending on which server I went on. Not too bad for the land down under. I scored the multiplayer at 8. The AI. I never really have a great experience with ISI based AI cars. They always seem to be getting in the way or ramming you. Uh, this is uh, no different in this sim. I scored this at 5.5. Getting on to the final score, it's uh, force feedback. The last part of my review. The force feedback in this sim is very nice. You can feel the car sliding, you can feel it gripping up. And when you touch another car or run off the track onto the grass, you get the relevant feedback immediately, adding to the whole experience of the sim. I scored Turismo Carretera's force feedback at 8. So that pretty much covers all the different points in the review guys. I scored Turismo Carretera at 75.3. If you'd like to check out Turismo Carretera, please go to www.tupez.com.ar Thanks guys, I really had a lot of fun doing this review and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Great job there Len, thanks for your first review which we've been waiting for and you did an awesome job. Now a lot of you with leagues out there have been wondering how to get your leagues on Inside Sim Racing. We'd like to let you know that each and every league that we feature is submitted us, to us directly by that league which leads me to the ARCA Elite Series. We got another video from them. Check out their recap. Welcome to another edition of the Elite Pro Series. 
week in review. This week, the Pro Series drivers would tackle the Iowa Speedway for the New River Racing 150. This week, it would be a CFC front row with Sean Bickle claiming the pole and Brian Busick on the outside pole. The CFC boys would lead the field to the start of the New River Racing 150. This week would see close side-by-side -side action as drivers would try to gain positions and work their way to the front. Several drivers found themselves in the tight side-by-side -side battles throughout the field. The racing would be this way the entire night. Mid-race, Brian Busick would try several times to take the lead from Jason Bernstein, but the high line proved to be the strongest for Bernstein as he would hold off Busick for the top spot. Just behind them, it would be Tim Simmons and Jake Simmons fighting the same battle for second and third. On lap 82, our points leader would find trouble. Bernstein would clip the rear of George Reed, causing Bernstein to spin towards the outside wall. Jason would recover to finish fifth. The Good Hands Driver of the Week award goes to Steve Sammons as he would weave his way through the spinning car of Bernstein unscathed. Near the closing laps of the race, drivers picked up intensity, trying to pick up as many positions as they could. Unfortunately, Hal Beersworth would get turned and would hit the inside wall, ending his night just short of the finish. This would set up a shootout to the finish between Sean Bickle and Byron Daly. Those two would race hard and close for the top spot. But in the end, it would be Sean Bickle holding off Daly to win his first Pro Series race of the season and regaining the top spot in the point standings. Congratulations, Sean. Also on the podium would be Byron Daly and Steve Sammons. Congratulations, guys. The point standings are tight with just two weeks to go. Join us next week for another edition of the Elite Pro Series Week in Review. Next week, the Pro Series drivers will tackle the Kansas Speedway for the Elite TV 200. See you next week. Thanks to ARCA Elite Series for the cool vid. If your league would like a video submitted on our show, contact us at info at insidesimracing.tv. Next up, we got the Mod Squad. And first on the Mod Squad is Barlow 1.1 by Mad Cowie. This oval is out of the Netherlands and comes in two flavors, both long and short. If you're looking for a dirt oval, then check out HM Bomber Raceway. This fantasy oval was made by Hard Dirt Fan and is 3 eighths of a mile of fun. Then we move over to Canada where Zero G has made a version of Edmonton and its 3.2 kilometer road course. Well, when it comes to road racing, street courses are some of the most exciting. So if you want to run within the walls of buildings and guardrails, then you need to try out Newcastle 1.0 by Finchley. This track is dangerous and a truly unique layout. If you're a stock car fan and you're already aware of Stock Car Evolution, there's a new version in town and it's Stock Car Evolution 1.0, this time bringing you the cars of tomorrow to bang some sheet metal on the big ovals with. The Stock Car Evolution team has put a lot of work into this version and it looks to have paid off. When we think of Mad Cow, we mostly think of track, but he's also gotten his hands dirty working on the new BMW Z3. Sim Stocks and Team Bat were also in on the project. Not only are these cool little race cars, but they come in convertibles. Gotta love racing with the wind in your hair. High Plains Raceway in Colorado is a 2.55 mile road circuit. This version here was made by Paul Leonard from scratch. This track has plenty of turns and changes in elevation, making it a fun track that you've probably never driven. This week, we have two mods of the week to hold you over until the new year. First up is CTDP by Cars Tracks Development Team. This is the 2000 season of Formula One. The mod features the entire car set as well as new teams like Spiker. Every car model is highly detailed and includes tech changes made during the season. It even has all the helmets of the actual drivers. The mod is designed with accurate suspension pieces and tires to match. CTDP has also pulled out all the stops by including very detailed setup garage choices, glowing brakes, open and closed wheels. Other items thrown in to make this such a complete mod are real feel and Leo feel, data acquisition and TV style overlays. Way to go CDTP, this mod has already made it onto the RFC Hall of Fame and it is well deserved. Next up in our other mod of the week is the VHR Stock Car, and for you NASCAR fans, you better listen up. 
This is a super mod, and I mean super-sized mod. The mod includes all three NASCAR series, the Nationwide, the Sprint Cup, and the Camping World Truck Series as well. All three in one mod. In addition to the models themselves are the already pre-painted NASCAR liveries. You will be able to drive Earnhardt's Hendrick car, or even the JR Motorsports car that he owns. And if that wasn't good enough, this mod comes with a ton of tracks all included. Download this mod, you will be running the high banks of your favorite ovals and stock cars. This mod will turn your R Factor into a stock car racer's dream. You can get this mod direct from VHR at VHRRacing.net. Alright, I'm back here with the guys joining me, as you can see. And Darren actually has some information he wants to go over with us. Yeah, actually I did a review, some of you may have watched on the, the uh, Ferrari Thrustmaster F430 wheel. And during the review, actually we both did this review. During the review, we had mentioned that uh, it wasn't compatible with Live for Speed because of the clutch. That's incorrect. Uh, Live for Speed works with, with with or without a clutch. So any uh, wheel without a clutch will still work. You just gotta toggle it. Yeah, exactly. So just wanted to uh, point that out to everybody and uh, say that this wheel is definitely or that wheel is definitely compatible with it. Thanks for the update. And while Darren has the mic. Um, as you know, this is our last show for 2008. We are ending a great year and kind of just wondering what your favorite moment of the year was or if you have a favorite moment. Uh, not, I don't really have one in particular. It's just probably, you know, we mentioned coming into 08, all the cool stuff that was coming out and a lot of great stuff came out in 08. ARCA, GTR Evolution, iRacing. Uh, these all this these great peripherals that are coming out the, the F430 wheel the Porsche wheel that we're going to speaking of which got the Porsche wheel review it's, it should be out any any day now but uh, just all the really cool stuff and and just how far the show's coming you know I'm, I'm really proud of that so what there's, about there's Sean uh, I think mine's kind of similar to Darren's I mean this has been a great experience we have the best fans out there we get great comments emails I mean I love just the whole interaction we have with our community. I love working with you guys. You guys are great. I love the show. I mean, I, it, you know, I, I love my butt kicker. I mean, that's the one thing I'm a big <laughs> fan of right there. So maybe big product, butt kicker. But yeah, it's just, it's been so much fun. I, I can't even pick a moment. But what about you, Jessica? As for me, uh, the funnest moment was actually when I got to put cake on your guys' face. <laughs> To be honest. Oh, you no. are such a sweetheart. That is so sweet of you. You guys don't have anything? No. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and I had a fun time when I met Sean uh, uh, Cole Little. <laughs> I was really surprised you guys kind of caught me off guard there. And I, not to sound full of myself or anything, but I like the bloopers. They make me laugh. Not just of myself, yeah. but. Those were actually some of my favorite moments too. Yeah. If you guys didn't catch last episode's, roll the roll past the credits. I don't think too many people saw it, but roll past the credits on episode 34. It's probably my favorite blooper of the year. But I like the bloopers of all three of us. Unfortunately, I'm just the one that has the most bloopers. <laughs> So yeah, it's been a great year and we're looking forward to bringing you guys a lot more episodes uh, in 09. So uh, stay tuned for that. And thank you all for uh, being such great fans and supporting us the, the last year. Yeah, and you know, I know we have a little more to cover here, but uh, you know, speaking of fans and support, you know, we asked for donations a while back and I don't know, if I, we, we got tons of them and we appreciate it. I don't know if that's how we ever wanted this show to be uh, paid for or, or exist by. And I, we've been given a lot of work and we're going to keep working on our web store, making more products available. And I just want to let you know, if you want to support SRT the best way, and this is mutual, you need a new wheel, buy it from our store. We do get a little something and it'll keep SRT alive, you get your wheel. And, and I don't think we want to do a bunch of begging for money, but again, you're part of sim racing. We are going to try to get as many good products in there and make them available to you and you can show your support. Yep, no question. Okay, well, before we end the show or the for the 2008, we have two winners from our last episode, number 34. Uh, one, these winners were randomly selected, who were subscribers to our YouTube page and posted a comment uh, about which game they'd like to win. The first winner is Red Dei Fan, who won R Factor. Congratulations! Yeah, congratulations, there, bud. And, uh... Uh, and then the next winner was uh, Fisher's J1, and he won STCC the game. So we're going to be sending you guys codes. That's, that's a, a digital download. You guys aren't going to be getting hard copies of those games. We're going to email you a code. So you guys need to email us your correct info so we know who you actually are. Send an email to uh, contest at insidesimracing.tv. And as soon as we get that from you guys, we're going to verify your... We, we verified that you guys were subscribers. Thanks for subscribing to Thank our you. YouTube channel. Very cool of you guys. 
Uh, actually, you wouldn't have won if you didn't subscribe. But uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead. Just go ahead. Like I said, email us there. We'll verify that you are who you are, and we'll get you out your code. That's gonna wrap it up for 2008 year. We've had a really great year, and I would like to wish everybody a happy holidays. Happy, holidays, yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas. happy New Year. New Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Everything. We'll be back. We'll be back in the mid January of 2009. In the meantime, we will have a few reviews and some other shows coming out, so just subscribe to our YouTube page and you'll be notified. Yep. See you guys later. Checkered flag is out. So are we. by members of that league. And that brings us to the ARCA Elite Serials. <laughs> 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 <laughs>